Greetings, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this celebration of the Mass from the Rectory Chapel at St. Mary's Cathedral in Grand Island, Nebraska. Today's Mass is offered for the living and deceased members of the E.J. Sullivan family. Today is Friday, the fifth week of Lent. One week from today, we commemorate Good Friday. The entrance antiphon for today, Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. O Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. Let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your peoples, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sins we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. During these final weeks of Lent, we notice that the readings become more intense, if you will, more intense about um, scandal, about desiring to hurt and to kill people. And again, we look to Jesus who receives all of that, especially in his cross, and he changes it all by his sacrifice of love. So today's first reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side, denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart. Let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. 
Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, quote, You are gods. If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God? If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true, and many there began to believe in him. This is good news, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to tell you a story today and then talk about how meaning can come from suffering. So the story is a story of three men who are all pushing wheelbarrows that are full of rocks. And there's a woman standing there watching the three of them come by. She stops the first one and says, what are you doing? And he looks at her with kind of disgust and disdain and he says, what does it look like I'm doing? I'm pushing a wheelbarrow full of rocks. And he goes on by. The next one comes and she says, what are you doing? And he looks at her and he says, I'm providing for my family. This is the way that I can love them. And then he continues on. Then she stops the third one and says, what are you doing? And the third one puts down the wheelbarrow, wipes his brow, smiles, turns around and points. And he says, I'm helping God to construct a, a cathedral. I'm helping build a cathedral for God. All three men are doing the exact same action, but for very different reasons. The first one will be burned out and angry by noon. The second one will continue out of obedience and out of love. He's caring for his family. He has a meaning for why he's doing what he's doing. The third one really believes that he's a co-worker with God. God wants him to be part of this activity to help build a cathedral for God. This man would lay down his life. This man is doing as Jesus did. In a sense, that wheelbarrow full of rocks represents every bit of suffering and distress, anxiety, fear that every one of us is going to experience in our life. It also represents all of the dyings, uh, the death of people we know, and one day our own death. And so we ask ourselves, what is the attitude with which I carry in the actions that I do? How do I accept those kind of sufferings? Am I just pushing rocks, bitter, angry? Am I doing it out of obedience or love? Am I willing to recognize that I'm working with God in this very moment to somehow accomplish God's purpose? When I was in college, the very first theology or religion class that I took, I remember the first book we read was by Viktor Frankl. The name of the book is Man's Search for Meaning. Viktor Frankl was a Holocaust survivor. So he was in the concentration camps for years. And he took the suffering of the concentration camp and he learned how to find meaning in it. I went back and revisited his ideas this week um, because he has three ways that we can find significance or meaning out of our suffering. The first way is that we respond to suffering. We respond to crisis by our works and our actions. That means that I don't just sit around passively doing nothing. It means that even if I'm in a quarantine, and Viktor Frankl was in a concentration camp, a very limited space. So he decided every day to do work. He went around to find small pieces of paper. He had a copy of a book that he had written and he decided to rewrite the book during his time there on all the scraps of paper he could find. A simple little detail, but every day he had a purpose. He had a work to do. So in quarantine or back in our homes, what is the work that you do today? We don't just play, we don't just sit around and watch movies. I want to do something worthwhile so I can do something for my faith. Um, there are many websites that are offering free Catholic content and movies right now. I can look at one of those a day. I can open my Bible with my family and begin reading one of the Gospels. I can pick up my phone and intentionally reach out to somebody else. 
Um, what's the work that you do today? What's your action that you do that has purpose? The second thing that Frankel says we do in the face of crisis is that, is that we respond with love. So every time we encounter another, regardless of how they are, I respond in love. I don't want to respond in anxiety and fear and anger and vengeance. That's the evil one. I want to walk with Jesus and respond to everyone in love. That means we intentionally encounter other people and I decide to do it in love. And love isn't just a feeling, it's a way of giving respect and dignity to every child of God. So we respond by some work, we respond in love. And then the third way is I cannot change the world out there, but I can change the world in here. Or rather, I can allow God to change the world in here. That means that I'm going to intentionally change my attitude. Why am I pushing this wheelbarrow full of rocks? Because I want to work with God today somehow to accomplish God's purpose when I can't understand what's going on out there in the pandemic. And I can't understand how I can do it here in my house with my family, but I'm going to trust. That takes courage. So I'm going to respond to this by putting significance onto my suffering putting significance onto the suffering of the world. Um, I can't change the world out there. I can in here be courageous. I can in here continue to trust in the Lord, maybe when I don't understand his purpose and his way. I can continue to move to him. Lastly, in today's gospel, Jesus says, I am in the Father and the Father is in me. That's a great gift of Christianity. We don't just follow Jesus, we get to share in Jesus' life. So in a sense, the purpose of our faith is somehow that God wants us to share in his life, us in him and he in us. That's a great gift. Um, our faith offers that. Uh, we call that co-inherence. It means we get to share in the inheritance of God. We get to share in God's life. So think about that third man pushing his wheelbarrow. He sees God next to him in his work, and that gives him strength. So whatever you're doing today, God is with you. And he wants to inherit in you, if you will. He wants to enter your life so you can enter his life. And then you can accomplish whatever he wants to do today. Let's ask God for the grace to do that. For our prayers of the faithful today, we finish the litany of supplication that Pope Francis offered one week ago today from the Vatican. Our response is, open us to hope, O Lord. Open us to hope, O Lord. If sin oppresses us, open us to hope, O Lord. If hatred closes our hearts, open us to hope, O Lord. If pain visits us, open us to hope, O Lord. If indifference anguishes us, open us to hope, O Lord. If death annihilates us, open us to hope, O Lord. Lord God, on this day, fill us with your hope, Change our attitude. Help us to find you and meaning in the suffering and incertitude of the world. We ask all of this in your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Excuse me, I have some hay fever this morning. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Amen.
Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to see the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, my peace I leave you, my peace I give you, not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communion antiphon, Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, so that, dead to sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do us harm, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have a blessed day. We'll see you tomorrow morning. May the Lord be with you always. Bow down for the blessing. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servants who seek the grace of your protection may be free from every evil and serve you in peace of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. God bless you.